Hello everyone, this is Robert, and this is the Shell to Drain Damage. This just showed up from PCBWay, and it is pretty amazing, so let's take a look at it. So as always, feel free to use the chapters to skip around. And I will once again say thank you to PCBWay for providing this. Um, they did this all free of charge just for the sponsorship and the mentioning in the videos. And they also provided me a bunch of little like um, giveaway stuff to give away at the event, which is really cool. They've been wonderful to work with and the quality of this thing is fantastic. So let's zoom in and take a closer look at the shell for drain damage. So here it is in all its glory. Now at first glance, this might look like aluminum because it well, kind of looks like aluminum, but this is not. This is actually bead blasted S7. S7 is used primarily in making weapons. Um, very, very few people use it for any structural or frame components. Um, it is very, very hard or can be hardened to be very, very hard. And it's used in weapons because it's really good at impact resistance. Um, a lot of people use an AR400, AR500, and ARs are very good, um, but they do bend, they do flex, and their failure mode is to kind of bend, whereas the failure mode of S7 is to just crack. So eventually this shell will probably end up cracking. However, the heat treating that I typically do on S7 is a lot less hard, a lot softer than normal, and so it's on a little bit on the softer side, but it still has great impact resistance. So yeah, let's take a closer look at the design and why I did certain things. So it's basically just a two-piece shell, and if it looks like I'm struggling moving this, it's because it's a lot heavier than you would think. So we've got the upper lid, and then we have the shell itself. Now, when I first designed this, um, I knew that I wanted quarter inch as the absolute thinnest. So quarter inch is what the top is and the bottom as well. So you can kind of see inside there. So you've basically got a shell around the drive of quarter inch on the bottom, quarter inch on the top, and the side walls are about half an inch at the thinnest and then you might be able to see there's a little bit of a kind of um, bulge out. It's about three quarters in the middle at the thickest and obviously a little bit thicker, you know, in the corners like that. That's pretty substantial. It might not look super thin and chunky here, but keep in mind that on Copperhead, a 250 pound combat robot that's gone through what, three, four seasons without any significant damage to the frame, that is one inch AR500. So this is a little bit stronger and more impact resistance. And this is three quarter at a 30 pound level. And I mean, this thing, I cannot stress enough just how chunky this thing is. It is very, very solid and it's difficult to pick up and move around. So as you kind of saw in the earlier videos, we have these um, drive paws. Let me grab a piece for one. And they just kind of sit inside just like that. So one like that and then one rotated on the other side and pretty simple. Uh, let me explain kind of the placement of things like this because I've learned a little bit in making clamshell bots over the years. So none of this is really going to be rocket surgery, but there's a couple interesting things I've learned in making clamshell. So you generally want the lid to kind of set inside. So you kind of want this recess, right? And the problem with having this recess is it makes this wall relatively thin. So you got to have enough meat here to not only sit on that recess, but also, you know, this not just be a really, really thin point. And I think this is still pretty good. This is still like maybe three eighths or larger. So this should be fine. The other interesting thing is if you put screw holes in the corner, it means that this corner wall thickness ends up becoming really, really big. That cross section is really big. It adds a lot to the weight more than you'd think. And if you kind of look at this, you need room for the countersink of the head, right? Oh, come on. 
So you need room for the countersink of the head. If we just move this over, it ends up being right here. So it's kind of like out here in the open and that will very much interfere with the drive. So if we did this exact same thing, it would be right here. There's actually wheel right there. So this whole thing kind of needs to shift in and then your wall thickness just gets bigger and bigger. So the geometry gets kind of weird. So what I ended up doing is moving the holes here on the inside. There's nothing on the drive here and these actually become keying points. So as you can see, there's nothing holding this in place, but it's captive in the X and the Y direction and the Z, it's just gonna be held in by the top. So no fasteners are needed in this just because these act as end stops and this acts kind of as a um, keying along the Y axis, which is kind of interesting. Um, the other thing to note is that when you're doing clamshells like this, I did one a few for Lolo Man, the corners are where a lot of hits are gonna come in from. So if you have a fastener kind of snugged up into the corners right there and you get a hit, I don't think this thing's gonna deflect, but let's say it does deflect in a little bit and this you know, curls up, the problem that you're gonna have is your fastener is so close to that inside, you're gonna break off these fasteners. There's gonna be theoretically more give in here, if that makes sense. Like, Hitting in here, the corner is going to flare up and you're going to lose those fasteners. So I wanted to keep the fasteners out of these corners. Uh, the only other feature worth mentioning here is the um, two holes here. These actually correspond to the power switch and the LED. This is kind of borrowed from Crippling Depression. Let me see if I have an example of that. Yeah. So here is one of the new versions um, of the drive. So that kind of sits in like that. I haven't tested this, let's see if it lines up. So that should be the power switch. Yeah, that lines up. So that is for the power and that is for the LED and these are um, mirrored. So on the other side, I'll just have a little 3D printed piece that will hold the LED and that'll be the access. Someone might be watching this thinking, well, what about the radio? Just don't ask those questions. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly how the radio is going to work on this. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that the signal is going to be able to come out through this shell, but there's a reason that I haven't hardened this yet because I'm going to wait to kind of figure all that out. Um, the radios that I use do have some relatively long antennas, and if I do end up having an issue, my idea for right now is to kind of run them alongside one of the wheel openings so they at least have some access out. We'll see. I haven't had this issue with any other, other of my closed in bots yet, but this is a big steel cage, so I might end up having radio issues with this. So just how heavy is the shell for drain bandage? Well, the lid is about 4.6 pounds or no, 2.1 kilograms. Sorry, it's hard to read upside down. The main body is about 8.5 kilograms or 8.7 pounds. And together, yeah, 23 and a half or 10.65 kilograms. So that means on a 30 pound robot, 23 and a half of it is basically the armor, which is pretty crazy. That leaves about six and a half pounds for all the drive, all the guts, all the electronics and all the batteries. So that's pretty cool. I'm very happy about that. So yeah, 23 and a half pounds of solid S7 armor. Now that might not seem like that much. I might be exaggerating the weight of this, but just as a comparison, these are weapon discs from Crippling Depression. That's one, that's two, and that's three. So this is a, you know, relatively average weapon that would be in the featherweight weight class. This would be in the same weight class as this. And three weapons is still about two pounds shy um, of what the armor is for this. So this kind of gives you an idea. One of these alone, this was, this was the weapon from the last iteration. Seven pounds, seven pounds hitting into a 23 pound S7 chassis. I don't know, it should be fun. 
So I think in this video, I'm trying to convey to you kind of the heft of this. And I think the biggest thing to point out is just how small it is. It's deceptive heft, if that makes sense. It is heavier than it should be for this size. I'm putting my hand up here. I have relatively small hands. And you can just see how relatively small this is. Where are those weapon discs? Here we go. So in comparison, one of the weapon discs of Crippling Depression is almost the same size as that, and it weighs three or more times that. So I'm gonna try and figure out some better ideas in the future on how I can just show you just how hefty this thing is. Here's a, here's a little good example. <laughs> it's, it's a fun thing. So I think that's about all I've got for this video. Now that the shell has been made and looks gorgeous, it is time to move on to kind of stuffing all the guts in here and kind of doing just a dry run. Um, I usually do kind of a test fit of everything just to see if there's any final changes I want to make. I've got everything printed in PLA for right now, um, just because I'm still making some changes. I actually just got the um, Bamboo X1C Carbon and X1C, X1 Carbon, whatever. And it's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's nice, it's fast. It's fast for rapid prototyping. So I'm gonna get all the guts in there. So that'll probably be the next video is just kind of dry fitting the um, new drive system in there. Then eventually we'll hook up the electronics, kind of get it driving, see what that looks like. As for the shell, I'm still kind of debating final finish options. I think I might just want to polish this whole thing to like a mirror shine. Um, I should be getting a fiber laser in soon, which can etch steel. Um, so I want to kind of do the drain damage logo that my wife came up with. I want to kind of have that etched over top of it, you know, top and bottom, have that in there and then just have the rest be polished, just a mirror finish. That could be kind of interesting. Um, I should have the time to do it since there's no immediate competition for this. So yeah, those are the next steps. Be on the lookout for more videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.